and kind of point is because Lawrence Jones used to say, if it's crooked, make it crookeder. So if somebody comes in like this, well, if you're McKenzie, what you'll say is you need to straighten them up, right? All right, you got to do your lateral shifts, and that's what I, I began with. And um, the deal is this. Somebody comes in like this, what do you want to do for them? I don't even care whether you're a therapist. Somebody comes in that's your friend and they're like this, what do you want to do for them? You want to straighten them up, right? Okay, because we have a natural tendency, if this wall is falling over, what is it we want to do? Fix it, and fixing it means it's what? Straighten it up. The thing about the body is, which way does the body want to go? Ain't nobody has ever not said that. Nobody has ever not said that. Every single time I say, what do you want to do to it? And they just stand them back up. And I say, so what does the body want to do? And every single person's always said, go that way. And I say, aren't those kind of opposed? Yeah. But that's what we're taught in our medical school. Absolutely, class. yeah, without yeah. doubt. Yeah. You know, remember, I came to the same place you are, right? So we're taught, and so doesn't that, doesn't that concept alone, doesn't that concept alone kind of just go, what are we doing? Right, so if you said, now who's smarter? Well, your body is. Yeah, your body is, right? So, have you ever, now this was a strain counter strain, this is nothing to total mystery. Have you ever taken somebody who's come in with a blown disc and done this? Have you? No. You're a McKenzie person, right? have you ever done it? Well, with strain counter strain, you let him down, you put his legs up, which is the same thing, it's just in a different, it's different plane, right? Sure. And that's what they would say, well, so let's sit him down and we'll get the tiny ten points in here and, and we'll flex them this way. But as I say, they're in that position, they're telling you what they want. Now, through experience, I had patients that came in like this, and after what happened, so this is setting the scene a little bit, I was a strain counter strain that I say I got bored with treating people on the table. The thing is, my hips were so dang um, tight that I hated that position where you had to do an AL5 and lift their legs up and over, and my hips just were so tight. And so I said, there's got to be a way to do this in sitting. Right, so I started doing people in sitting, and I started doing people in standing. And so it became much more functional, and they began holding longer. So when somebody came in like this, I could quickly go, hey, that's, a, that's, a, that's just one of these, you know, in, on the table. And I said, well, why don't we just make them do the motion? And so I, I had a lady that came in with severe pain. I actually go on to lunch, and somebody, one of my therapists was treating, and I said, you can't even fill out the forms. Why don't you do this? And she went down just a little bit, and she goes, she swore. <laughs> she said, shit. I go, what, what, what? And she goes, you tell me for three weeks I've been in pain and all I had to do was go this far and this whole time I've been to being told myself-wise to stand up straight? And I said, well, you can go further down if you want. She goes, really? I go, yeah. So she ended up being down like this. She goes, and it was just like, whew, everything just kind of leaked out. She stood up and she was straight. Yeah, cool. And that was a strain counter strain philosophy that I just took to a functional position. And, um, the kicker, though, was, again, this still isn't the aha moment. I talk in circles, and I come into the bullseye. Uh, so the next patient, I don't even know if McKenzie's ever seen somebody like this. This patient came in, I can't even get down back as far, like this, in pain, pain into this side. She came from next door, which is a doctor's office, to buy a therapy ball. She wasn't coming for a, a visit. And I was like, oh my god. Now, I still was in the, in the mindset, she needs to stand up. And she needs to be shifted, so she can. She screamed, and she screamed, and I'm sweating. And I'm like, oh my god. And I said, well, fine. You came in for a therapy ball. Maybe you know something that I don't. And I said, lean over backwards over my leg. And she did. And it was just like a sand clock just going out of the boat. Right now. She just completely relaxed. She stood up. She was scheduled for surgery that Friday. She stood up, and she was standing up straight. And she had been standing up straight for six weeks. I said, how can you not? Have she goes, well, I, I'm a... I'm in a car sales place, and she goes, how did she say she was? She'd be like this, doing her forms. Oh my Jeez. Gosh. Yeah. yeah, so I was like, wow. Yeah. So the only thing she had left is some, a little bit in her leg, and then a week later she came back, because she goes, they want to do surgery on me, because they said that is because I have saddle paresthesia, perhaps, or no, she goes, if I don't get that fat fixed, I may have saddle paresthesia, and, and I've blown out S1, probably it's a nerve root impingement, and she goes, I told him, before I'm doing any surgery, I've got to go back and see Tom. And she came and she goes, I don't think that's what it is. She goes, I think I sprained my ankle when I had such bad back pain, and I just didn't know I had sprained it. 
I thought I'd check it out, and we did this really odd position on the other side. We found the part that was painful, uh, and we repeated the big old motion on the other side. So we took care of that. To this day, she actually referred to pain just a couple months ago, and I said, how's the pain? She said, I just have a little bit of sensation right there. So that, to me, then really emphasized the idea is that I don't know Jack, but the body does. And it's easy if the person comes in looking distorted, like Lawrence Jones used to say, if you just cook and make it crooked, that's easy. But what about you and me that don't look crooked? What do we do? And so I always had that in the back of my mind. And, you know, it was neat to do John stuff and you'd follow the body. And so I had that part about following the body. I had the part about strength counters, like cook and make it crooked. But I never had that part of simplicity that seemed to go, well, how can I stop doing And I was also a math teacher before I was a PT. So I had this concept too, is that when my students left me, they all knew how to do PT. I mean, they all knew how to do algebra. Okay? Right? So that was my end product. My end product was I gave, gave it away to you. And so that kind of always bothered me. So when I became a good enough manual therapist, I said, what's next? Right? So you do well, and then you get to some people that you say, I wish I could just give these people something, just get them the energy out of my room. You know? Um, <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> 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 You know, I love doing, you know, manual stuff on people and all that. I like doing it on them, all right? But there's other ones, and I said, there's got to be, there must be some basics that are there. So again, this was just in the back of my mind. I said, I just wish there was, all right? So as I was doing strain, counter strain, and functional, so if somebody couldn't lift their arm up, I'd be doing opposite. So I was doing something close to it. It wasn't until this happened. I had a uh, very kind lady come in that wanted to be able to dance her daughter's wedding. She was about 68, but very functional and moving well. And, and she had a pain of 8 out of 10 back pain. She had a shoulder restriction or a ro rotation restriction. I don't remember which one it was. Um, and she had to use the armrest to get up. Minimal, though. The thing that she said, though, was what changed everything. And she goes, I don't know if this makes a difference or not. But for three years now, when I take steps, I always have to lead with my left and follow with my right. I cannot step up with my right leg. And I said, and I was always one that said, show me. So I'm coming from, show me, show me. So I put a step stool down, and literally, so I'm off to the side as I'm watching her, and she steps up here. And she's not able to even facilitate any motion going up. It was really odd. And so as I'm standing over here, boom, this aha thing goes, oh my god. I've always paid attention to, so I'm going to say to you guys, if I can do this, and I can't do this, <clears throat> what's wrong? What's the obvious thing? Sorry, not what's wrong. What's the obvious? My leg's a lot weaker. What's the obvious? Right leg. What's the obvious? Right leg. What's the obvious? What's the obvious? Right leg. What's the right obvious? Right obvious? You're hugely in a box. You have tunnel vision. That's what I was too until all of a sudden I go, holy cow, she does have more body than just that right leg. And it hit me. I said, why don't I try the left leg? It was like all of a sudden, Lawrence Jones' thing about if it's crooked, make it crooked, if it's follow the body, all of a sudden came in. I said, I wonder what would happen if we did the left leg a bunch. Because she seemed to be easily able to do that. And at that moment in time, I said, oh, this lady's nice and kind and trusting. I said, do you mind if I try something? I have no clue in the world if it's going to work. But, and I told her a little bit about it. It's crooked, make it crooked, or what, do what the body's doing. And I said, well, you do two sets. I think we said to fatigue. And I said, that'll probably take 15 before you do. So she did two sets of step-ups. Okay, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. I said, let's retest. And she exploded up there on the right leg. My mouth dropped, her mouth dropped, and she goes, what'd you do? And I said, not a clue. <laughs> not a clue. But it was fascinating enough to me that I was like, ooh, that's pretty cool. She sat back down, got back up, didn't use her arms, said, test your shoulder. She tested her shoulder, and it was like 60% improved. And I said, what's your back pain? She said, a two, from two sets. So I didn't really know what to do now. You know, yeah, we could have done more or something. I didn't really know what to do. At that moment in time, I said, I need, to, I need to explore motions. So I knew enough motion. With strain, counter strain, you do enough motions to find a tender point sometimes or to relieve a tender point. But all I began doing is I said, me and, uh, is it Kendall? Is Kendall the old lady that did the yeah. movie? Florence. We, yeah, Florence yeah. and I just need to get together and yeah. do, do a ton of the, the motion. And so what I did is I just began playing with any and every motion I possibly could find and do. And what we would do, and well, we'll do a little bit of this after break, is that you, I just picked motions and I treated them. All right, well, your motions today 
I might go through 25 of them before I find your major restriction. Mm -hmm. And the thing that sucks is those 25 today are going to be different tomorrow. So the ones that we fixed are now fixed, or the ones that are better, then tomorrow I've got to find another 25 or 30. And so at that time, we were seeing patients for an hour at a time. Now we do two an hour. Um, so it was like the last 50, the, the 50 minutes of finding all these motions, 10 minutes of treating them. And I said, there must be a way to make this easier. There must be certain motions that are more bang for the buck. 